Smash Mouth Sports. I'm your host, as always, Preston Bailey. With me, Cam Vieira. We just had a great conversation with Aaron Jacobson from iHeartRadio in the Tampa studios. We could not be happier because here we are. We got another video that's probably going to go viral, probably going to excite a lot of people. The donkey of the week is Jake Paul. Preston, how could this be? Last week, your most popular show was you coming to the defense of Jake Paul with the Jamel Hill comments. And you know what? You're right. But guess what? I'm not afraid to call a spade a spade. The reason why we're Smash Mouth Sports, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to give you the truth. That's what it's about. Okay, so a week ago, he he is the donkey of the week because last week, Jake Paul was trending on every platform on planet Earth. Every single platform. Jake Paul, for one week in his life, actually had sympathy. Here's a guy that grew up on the Disney Channel with his long blonde hair and his brother and this and this. He's had a great and privileged life. And then this idiot, Jake Paul, the idiot, ruined all that sympathy because everybody, even people that did not even like Jake Paul, were defending Jake Paul, saying, no, Jake Paul's not racist for knocking out Nate Robinson, who's black. Okay. It's a boxing might, fat, a boxing match. I'm also, I'm so riled up. Cam, what do you think about that? No, I mean, he, he, they agreed to the boxing match. Jake Paul knocked Nate Robinson out. It's what it is. It is what it is. There's, you fight the man across from you. It doesn't matter what the color of his skin is or what he is, whatever. You fight the man. If you win, you win. It's that simple. Let, let, let's, look, we're in a hypersensitive climate. The reason I was upset at Jamel Hill is she she's at, look, people see Jamel, like, and then she, she did a, a, a follow-up apology, whatever word you want to use. She tried to say that she would, no, she most certainly was not joke. She's not a comedian. Okay, she's it's not a comedian. She is. She's a serious journalist. Okay, she even says for years she preferred being a writer for ESPN than an on-air talent. Okay, on-air talent like me and you, Cam, the star of the show here, the one that brings the party. We can be entertaining. We can be, you know, big and bold and say, "Hey, I was joking about this, joking about that." Okay. She's a writer. She's a journalist. She's been a journalist for years. And she's diving. She's dove into political comments. So let's get into Jake Paul. You with me, Cam? Absolutely. Send me the comments. Ask Smash TV Radio. Love it or hate it. But just make sure before you send me the anger and the heat, you better like and subscribe to this channel. If not, I don't want to hear it. Your words are hollow if you don't like and subscribe to this channel. And they're having a party here. In the background. So I hope I don't go too buck wild and I just start throwing chairs at the building here. Because I'll tell you right now, Jake Paul can get these hands too if he thinks he's so tough. But let's get into why he is the donkey of the week. He did a video uh, a couple days ago. He's smoking a cigar. He's wrapped in the Irish flag. He's in his Ferrari, Lamborghini sports car, whatever it was, in his million-dollar house. I got no problem that you want to fight Conor McGregor in a boxing match because it's it's a stunt. I get it. Okay, I get it. You want to get more money, you're offering Conor 50 minutes. Here's my problem with that. I'm not even going to repeat the language that he used, which I did not appreciate. I also did not like the fact, and the, this is the reason he's the donkey of the week, he went after Conor McGregor's wife. Okay? That's below the belt. He went after his wife. He called his wife unattractive. He called her a four or five. Conor can do better. You don't go after a man's, excuse me, you don't go after a man's wife. You don't, you don't do that. Okay. It's crossing went, the line. It's crossing the line. He went after his wife. Okay. If you want to call Connor weak and blah, 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 and this and that, look, Jake Paul. Okay. Jake Paul, he, for an at, look, he's six one. He's about 190, 192 pounds. He's a decent sized guy for your average guy at the bar. He would not be the guy that you would want to fight at the bar. There'd be smaller guys that you'd want to fight. Not that he's a huge guy, but 6'1", close to 200 pounds, for your run-of-the-mill, is a decent-sized guy. Would you agree, Cam? Absolutely. Decent-sized guy. But here is the point, okay? Is he uh, – Conor McGregor is 155 pounds. So, yeah, you're talking about almost a 40-pound weight disadvantage, Okay. I'll tell you right now what I would love to see. I'd love to see Jake Paul in the UFC because all these guys want to box and his brother, Logan Paul, is fighting Floyd Mayweather. Look, do you realize his brother, his brother is almost 6'3". His brother is 210 pounds. His brother is bigger than he is. 
Correct. Now his brother is just not his brother is a big strong guy. He's just not a great boxer. But regarding the Logan Paul and Jake Paul situation, okay, the older brother fighting Floyd, which is crazy in itself. Uh, do I think Floyd is going to lose on punches? No, but when you fight a guy that's 6'3", 210 pounds, that is a big, strong, young, 25-year-old bull, and you're a four, near 45-year-old man, yeah, there's a real chance at that. So now there, I, I, I saw some rumblings going on about Jake. To get back to Jake Paul, I saw some tweets going on. Dana White said it's not going to happen. Now, Cam, you have some breaking news that you want to bring us. Is this true about the Jake Paul situation, about who Dana White might let him fight? Let's hear about this. Yeah, UFC President Dana White uh, commented on the situation today, and he said he's he'll let Jake Paul fight in the UFC, but he'll have to fight Amanda Nunez. Wow! Look at that, Amanda Nunez. Now here, now here's what I read. What I read is, I, I don't think it's in the UFC. I think what what Dana White approved, if I understand the story correctly, of a boxing match. Now this is what's so brilliant about what's going on with this. Amanda Nunez is a 135-pound female. Now, she is the champion. For those that don't know Amanda Nunez, she's popular, but she was she didn't reach the Ronda Rousey mainstream level yet, even though she's the champion. Amanda Nunez is, I believe, the first open LGBTQ champion. And what's interesting about her specifically, she beat Ronda Rousey. She destroyed Ronda Rousey. Correct. When it, when it comes to females, and it's still, it's not that old of a game, the fight game for females. It's still fairly new as far as the UFC goes. She's the champion. So she is the GOAT. And, and that's what's so brilliant about Dana White. Dana White said, okay, I'll let my UFC fighters fight you in a boxing ring, but not Conor McGregor. I let Conor McGregor do that with Floyd. I allowed Conor, is at Dana White's words, I allowed Conor to fight Floyd and get his $100 million. I'm not allowing it again. But what I will do is I'll let Amanda Nunes beat you. And again, I do love that. Now, Amanda Nunes is elite, but again, so she she fights at 135. She's the female champion. Uh, it's in a boxing match. She is trained in boxing. She is an elite fighter. Now, at the end of the day, Jake Paul is not a highly skilled boxer. He's not. No, he, he fought an Nate, NBA player. He beat Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson is a small guy, okay? With the exception of Muggsy Bogues. Nate Robinson is the smallest guy in the NBA in 40-plus years. He's the smallest. He's 5'8", yes. barely 180 pounds. That is a small guy. You talk about the guy in the bar, truthfully, if there's a scuffle and you had a choice to fight Nate Robinson or fight Jake Paul, you'd fight Nate Robinson if you had to fight. Because he's, he's a small little guy. It's not that Nate, Nate's a tough little scrappy guy, but he's a small guy. He's a small person. He's little. He's tiny. He's not intimidated yes. at all. No, he's not. So Jake Paul wins one fight against a 37-year-old, 38-year-old retired small NBA player. Okay, I'd love to see Jake Paul against LeBron James. I'd love to see Jake Paul against some of these bigger, stronger guys. He chose the smallest guy he could. I'm just simply saying, you don't get to be 2-0 and fighting YouTube stars, 50-year-old uh, boxers, you know, 50-year-old retired people, 40-year-old NBA guys, and then get to go. To the to the champ or former champ of Conor McGregor. What are your thoughts, Cam? No, one hundred percent. He's skipping steps. A absolutely. I mean, if Floyd Mayweather is going to fight his brother, I mean, he should. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, should this even count against Floyd Mayweather's record if he wins this game? I mean, are we going to call him a fifty-one year old, fifty-one and zero boxer? Come on. I mean, this is crazy. Well, no, it's it's an ex. I believe it's an exhibition, if I'm not mistaken. It's not sanctioned. It's not. It's not. You know, against Floyd. So the thing with to get back to Jake Paul and Conor McGregor, it, it's really simple. Most of these guys now boxing. So. Cam is a hardcore boxing guy. You know, I, I am way more UFC. He, he he loves the boxing. I love the UFC. I've, I've drug, dragged Cam into um, UFC. And so when people see boxing, they, oh, this guy's 25 and 0. He's 30 and 0. Okay, that, there's a lot of fakeness in boxing. Okay, there, there, there is, the only guy that is close to 30 and 0 is Habib. Habib is 29 and 0, correct? Correct. He needs one more to get to 30 and 0. So that that just does not happen. And as great as Khabib is, and he's definitely one of the greats, he's also 155 pounds. Okay? Correct. You, you, you do not see in the UFC, you don't see 205-pound guys, 250-pound heavyweight champions go 25 and 30 and 0. It, it, it doesn't happen. Because at that size, when you're 200-plus pounds, and you can choke somebody out, you can knock somebody out, throw an elbow, a knee, break their arm, break their leg. When you find another guy that big and that strong, 
there's just so much available to get knocked out. So the donkey of the week is Jake Paul. He ruined every bit of sympathy and credibility that he had. It's like he could not get out of his own way. And, I, and we're going to end this show with this. I, I'm not the biggest Nate Diaz fan, but I love the fact that Nate Diaz called out Jake Paul. I love that fact. I love the fact that Nate Paul said that he was going to get these hands. Nate, uh, Jake Paul was going to get these hands from Nate Diaz. And here is the point. I want to end it at this cam. You're right about skipping the table, skipping the line. Look, if, if Jake Paul wants to fight eight more guys, great. Fight, fight eight more guys. 100%. Then you can fight Connor. Fight eight more guys. Okay. That, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so that that's what it uh, uh, comes down to. What are your thoughts on that? No, absolutely. I mean, he's just he's skipping the line. He looks like Conor McGregor. That's why everyone's trying to say that they they should fight. He's at the flamboyancy of Conor McGregor. So I mean, it would be entertaining to watch, but it'd be over in a round or two. Conor You're McGregor right. is a trained assassin. You're right. He's a trained assassin, Conor McGregor. You're right. It is. It is interesting. It, I, I love the drama and the spectacle of it. I'm. I'm, I'm sucked in. I'm drawn in. I. It, this is a train wreck. You know. You know. It's wrong to look at a train wreck and a car wreck. We, we've all driven down the road. We see this horrible car wreck, and what do we do? Oh, look at that! I can't believe what happened. And everybody stops. Wow. Everybody right. does the same thing. Wow! Look at this train wreck. Logan Paul and Conor McGregor is a train wreck on steroids on top of more steroids. Like these. These guys are insane. <laughs> But here is the difference, what people are missing, what Dana White said. Conor McGregor is the best in the world. I understand Habib beat him. Okay, Habib is from Russia. Conor McGregor is from Ireland. We, and Conor had fought a year and a half. What people don't understand about the UFC, it's not the best in the U.S. Okay, it's, it's the best, the in, best the in the world. Conor McGregor is the best fighter in Ireland. Habib is the best fighter in Russia. Habib is also the best in the world. He's over. He's overtaken that, and that's great. But Habib is retired, okay? So the point is, Jake Paul has not fought a professional fighter. Nate Robinson is not a professional, okay? Here's what I want to see. I want to see Jake Paul, who wants to be big and bad and tough, let him fight John Jones, okay? <laughs> wow. That's what I want to see, okay? They're, they're both in the same weight. They're both within a 10 or 12-pound range. Fight John Jones. Fight Daniel Cormier, okay? That's that's what I'm talking about. Fight Brock Lesnar, yeah. Right. Well, Brock Lesnar's too big. I'm saying <coughs> uh, Daniel Cormier's weight's going up and down, but he's been the 205 champion. John Jones is the 205 champion, been the 205 champion. Fight the 205-pound champion. It, it, it's, Conor has a lot of uh, brash and bold. Conor McGregor's 155 pounds. I love Conor McGregor. But for a guy 6'1", 200 pounds of muscle, just because you got feathery blonde hair, Challenging a guy 150 pounds, beating 170 pound basketball players, that doesn't make you tough. No. Jake Paul, I give Jake Paul credit for one thing. He's a smart businessman. He yes, knows he he's not, he knows he's not tough. He knows he, he's not challenging John Jones. He's not challenging Daniel. He knows he would get destroyed with those guys. Right. He's not challenging Tyson Fury. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll tell you a fight that that nobody's talking about that he should do. Let him fight Anderson. Silva. Anderson Silva is 44 years old. Anderson Silva is 185 pounds. Anderson Silva would kill Jake Paul, literally kill him in boxing. Yes. You have seen anything. And the reason why Anderson Silva, Anderson Silva wanted to fight Roy Jones Jr. Many people don't know this. 10 years ago, 12 years ago, he wanted to fight Roy Jones Jr. And at that time, he was going to get like $20, 25000000 million, which is a lot of money. And 10 or 12 years ago, it was even more ridiculous than, than, than the fights are now. But Dana White said no. Conor McGregor was the first guy that Dana White approved because he felt it was good for the global. It was it was good for the for the team, right? Right. Yes. So uh, before we wrap this up, but yes, the donkey of the week, Jake Paul, for his comments. Uh, I would love to see. I'd love to see Amanda Nunes. I'd love to see it. But at the end of the day, I love Amanda Nunes. Um, honestly, she is tough. She would beat him in the UFC. I'm sorry, I just. I don't think a 135-pound female against a 195-pound muscular 6'1", young, 24-year-old bull, I, I don't think that's smart. I, I understand why she would do it. I get it. Because if she's getting 100, 150 grand a fight and she would get millions of dollars, I get it. You know, that's her Floyd Mayweather. But, uh, yeah, like and subscribe to the channel, at Smash TV Radio. Anything you want to add to this, Cam, before we wrap this bad boy up? No, I agree. Jake Paul, donkey of the week. 
Donkey of the Week. Like and subscribe. Producers. Absolutely. See ya.